And then it's a quick video about uh, inverters and uh, modifying them to run off lipos. So this is, as you see, a that's a modified sine wave as they call it. So this is a pretty straightforward, simple, cheap inverter. This particular model is uh, uh, made by Ames, perfectly good inverter, uh, one kilowatt rated. I've had it for ages, works fine. This is quite nice because, as you see, it's actually running now, so I'm going to be a little careful. Um, it's got three transformers here, which are just used in parallel. Um, now, the way these, as you see, I mean, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Anyway, so the point is, what I'm, what I'm doing here is, let me turn this off one sec. Okay, you heard the beep there. Well, it, uh, that was the undervoltage beep that it does. Of course, as I turned it off, it sort of made the beep as it died. Now... Um, just a bit about how these work basically so there's two there's there's basically a low side and a high side there's 12 volts comes in um, goes through these fuses here and then this is the 12 volt side so these capacitors here are smooth the uh, incoming power so these need to be rated at a bit more than the battery voltage so you know it's a 12 volt inverter so in fact these are 25 volt rated caps which is good that means we've got some headroom if we want to incre increase the input voltage so these come in they're smoothed this bank of FETs here, this whole bank of FETs here in a heatsink, these chop it um, at around 35 kilohertz. Um, they chop it very fast and then they and then they run them into these transformers which then come out the other side um, at, at around 180 volts or something, something like that. A bit less than that, 150 volts maybe. Um, and then it's rectified by these diodes and smoothed by these high voltage capacitors which I'm not going to touch because they're still charged. And these are rated 200 volts. So there's around, around, you know, somewhere under 200 volts DC here. And then, from how do we get from that to um, AC? Well, that's what the second stage is for. So these transistors along the back here, these are the high side chopping set, which basically what they do is they take the DC and they produce that waveform you saw, which is a kind of stair-step chopping AC kind of signal. This is an H bridge. And then, as you see, this is wired straight out to the sockets. So it's actually pretty straightforward. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly standard design. The reason you, you have two stages, the reason you chop the 12 volts into high frequency. Well, you need it as AC anyway, but you, you want to chop it at, at, at quite a high frequency because that means that you can use smaller transformers, basically. It works more efficiently. So power comes in, DC, smoothed, chopped to about 35 kilohertz, comes out rectified, turned into 200 volt DC-ish, which is then chopped into that waveform you saw, which looks like AC, and that comes out. That's it. Now, in terms of control circuitry, these all tend to work the same, and they all tend to, in fact, use the same chip, which is the TL494 PWM controller, which is absolutely ubiquitous. It's used everywhere, like almost so many switching power supplies. You use PC power supplies, like everything. It's the standard chip, and there's lots of clones of it. Essentially, what this is, this is one usage of it. Basically, this is running a buck converter, but essentially, it has a bunch of built-in stuff. It has everything you need built in, including a voltage reference here that's important. So it has a 5-volt reference. Whatever you feed in, it, will, it has one pin that will always give you 5 volts. And then it has a bunch of comparators and stuff and some switching logic and it will drive whatever you need to switch and then that's in the inverter it's actually wired in, in, in the main inverter it's wired up differently to this this different kind of converter but the key thing is it has some switching stuff which is a voltage uh, reducer at this point and then this thing here this is these two resistors are a resistor divider so it's actually that's the output voltage and that's ground and and this because they're both the same value that will actually divide it by two so whatever's on here if this is 10 volts then we'll get five volts here. And if there's 20 volts, we'll get 10 volts and so on. So the reason they divide it by two here is because they want a 10 volt output. So in this example schematic, so dividing this by two gives you five volts if it's 10, if it's 10 volts. So this comes back here and then is compared, goes into the comparator and is compared to its internal five volt reference basically. So that's how it knows that it's producing exactly 10 volts because it takes the 10 volts, divides it by two and then compares it to the five volts and adjusts itself depending on that. So that's basically a simple feedback loop. Okay, now this works much the same. Only in this case, what they're doing is they have they have two of these chips because, like I said, there's a low side switch and a high side switch. And the low side switch is uh, will be will be switching this side and then measuring a divided version of the of the 200 volts or 180 volts or whatever it is they want on here. So it will make sure that this stays at around 180 volts. And then the second side probably doesn't need any feedback because that just switches at a constant 60 hertz and generates your 60 hertz, you know, your 60 hertz output waveform. Now, I haven't played with these trim pots or traced them out, but these, these adjustable potentiometers here, the black ones, um, they almost certainly let you adjust things like the output frequency and so on. Generally, I wouldn't mess with them. Now, our only goal here is to... This thing has a, a separate under-voltage cutoff, right? So you heard the beep. And the beep, of course, is when it the input voltage, the nominally a car battery, drops below about 
10.5 volts is what it's rated at. So when the car battery goes under 10 volts, this thing beeps and turns off. Well, it turns off the power. Now, that's not part of the standard controller chip. What they actually do is you, you bolt on a separate circuit to do that, and that's what they've done here. The separate circuit is here underneath. I've added this blue trim pot. I'll explain this in a second. This is a, this chip under here is a standard uh, comparator called, uh, I think it's uh, LM358. It looks like this basically two units in one, but two independent comparators. And, and basically it compares the plus and the minus inputs and then the output goes high or low depending on whether one is larger than the other. Now what they do here is they basically, it takes the, the main power comes in here from the battery, the 12 volts comes in, goes through some fuses, and um, it's actually switched. So this is the on-off switch here. So um, I can show you the other side of the board if I'm careful. Let me just put on like this. It's probably mostly discharged by now, but I'm gonna be careful anyway mainly because there's a couple of hundred volts DC on here. So, well, there was. <laughs> anyway, so, flipping it over, um, here's a little power stuff. Now, importantly, this um, this trace here, I'm not touching it with the screw, um, this trace here is the, uh, is, the tw is the main battery voltage input, and this trace, this is the power trace that drives all the control electronics. So, these two dots here are the, that's where the power switch plugged in. So, so that, that's why the power switch is a little weedy switch, because it's just switching on and off the control electronics, not this main power bus. This is all the high power stuff. Okay, so, basically this power comes in here, it goes wheelie wheelie, goes to this module which has the two switching chips on it, and then there's some extra stuff here which they added, and this particular, this is the underside of that comparator chip which tells you which which checks for low voltage. Now this is a dual comparator, so it turns out this side this this side of the comparator is used for something else. I think it's overcurrent detection. These three pins here are the pins are the input and the input and the output for the comparator that's checking the input voltage. Now what they're doing is they're using the five volt reference that comes off this module that contains those two standard chips. So they're making five volts for us anyway, which is handy. So we take that five exactly five volt reference and after some shenanigans that basically comes into this pin here. So this pin is always at 5.00 volts. And of course it's been compared to this. Now this is the input voltage divided by something. Now what we want to do, what they will have done with this, is they, they want to make this thing cut off when the input voltage gets to basically 10 volts. So they will have done pretty much the same thing. They'll have basically divided by two. They'll be taking this, the input power comes in, goes through the switch. And as it turns out, this resistor here, there's a resistor on the top side here, and there's a resistor on the, on the top side here. And those two resistors are the resistor divider. So basically, you just need to alter one or both of these resistors, one is fine, and basically change the amount that divides the input voltage before it's compared with 5.0 volts. At the moment, it's about to divide by two, and we actually want to make it a slightly higher, and we want to divide by two and a bit, because we want it so that 12 volts, when divided by our divider, equals five. So when the input goes, because we want, the, we want it to cut off when the LiPo voltage gets to about 12 volts, not to 10 volts because we're using a 4S LiPo, by the way. A 4S LiPo is about 16.8 volts fully charged, and about 12 volts is basically 3 volts per cell, which is when you want to stop using it. Pretty much discharged at 12 volts. So what we're going to do here is we're going to adjust this divider, which checks for the under voltage, and we're going to make it so instead of cutting off at 10 volts, it cuts off at 12 volts. Um, because the, div the divider ratio basically depends on the values of the two resistors, you know, compared to each other, means we can alter either of them. Now, what we're going to do here, what I did here, which just to keep it easy, this was just a practical decision, was that the old resistor is this one down here that I've chopped off. That was 15K. And the other resistor is this one here, which I couldn't be bothered to get to. So basically what I did is I chopped off the, this is the low side. So this is pulling it down to ground. So basically I chopped that one off and replaced it with a 20K trim pot here. It's actually wired in the same place that resistor was. It's the same electrical place. So it's wired onto the one side of the comparator and the other side is wired to ground, which is actually conveniently available there. So basically, the third part of this trim pot is not used. So essentially this trim pot is just replacing that resistor but making it variable. And as expected, basically, I've already done this, but I've adjusted it so that you can turn the trim... You, I use a, uh, a nice power supply, but I set the power supply to my cutoff voltage and then adjust the trim pot until it beeps and then you're done, basically. So this is now modified so that it will turn off at, it will it will work fine at 16.8 volts and it turns off at 12 volts and beeps. Um, obviously you could adjust it back if you wanted to, but this is a pretty good way to do it. I'm just gonna stick a bit of hot glue on there and then I'm done. Um, the only other consideration is this input fan is a 12 volt fan and this, so this is just running, this is just connected directly to the uh, the incoming battery power. So when you run this for 16 volts, the input fan is a bit, a little more brisk, but you know, it's all good. Um, and that's basically the whole story. Um, it's, this is a very easy mod to make. You just have to trace out. You really just 
they will always have something like this. They will almost always use an op amp or a, or a comparator for the under or over voltage detect. Um, and you need to find the resistor divider and modify it. I'll just show you another example. There's a, I don't have this in pieces right now, but here's a Harbor Freight Centec inverter, which, uh, okay, then it's not as efficient as this, but it works fine, it's very cheap. Um, this has been modified for 4S LiPo in the same way. Now this one actually is, is actually has more protection circuitry. This one has over voltage detection as well. So what that means is that if you connect more than about 15 volts, it just doesn't work, as well as having the usual beep and turning off st stuff. Now I've already modified this one, but I will show you part of the schematic for it. Uh, which I have here, right. So that one uses a similar kind of module, which is a ready-made off-the-shelf module, much like this module here, that one there. Featuring, in fact, the same two chips, of course. Everyone uses the same, these same uh, TI or TI clone chips. Um, now, the modification here is that, okay, this is a slightly more complicated schematic, but I'll show you what they did. So this is the Centec inverter, by the way. So they've got one, this is a quad using, ours used a uh, LM358 dual comparator, but the Centec one uses a quad uh, comparator for their own reason, doesn't really matter why, they have some other stuff to do. What they did is they have a beep, they have one circuit here which detects um, under voltage and makes it go beep, but it still runs. And then there's another circuit here which detects when the, when the voltage is a bit lower than that, and then it actually just turns everything off. So it will beep and run for a while, and then it will shut off because of these two circuits. Now the over voltage is the Zener diode here, and this simply stops the whole thing working if it's over about 15 volts, which is the Zener diode. Now what I did, I just cut that diode out basically, and that just kills the over voltage because I don't care about that. Um, the under voltage beep, what I did is I found these resistor chains and I basically changed the values of resistors. I just put a trim pot on there, which allowed me to do the same modification. Um, the good thing about, you could obviously disable the under voltage, but I really don't recommend it if you're using a lipos. I recommend that what you do is adjust it like this. If you really want to be fancy, you could put a switch on here. So it was, I had a switch to go from, you know, lead acid to uh, lipo settings, but I don't bother. I'm all done with lead acid. Um, and I, I'm expecting all, all uh, inverters can be readily modified to do this. Like I say, you want to check the input caps just to make sure that they are 25 volts, which they usually are. If they're 16 volt rated, then pretty marginal. I mean, uh, you could go for it. I've gone for it in the past and they haven't blown up, but you know, 25 volts is cool. You could probably swap them. I wouldn't worry about stuff like the only other part that, that is subject to input voltage changes really are these switching fets, which are the low side switches. And these are not going to be rated. These are going to be rated significantly higher than, than you, you care about anyway, probably 30 volts or so. So going from lead acid battery voltage to LiPo voltage is generally fine. Um, and there you go. There, that is a LiPo modified inverter.